Okay. So just before we begin this next segment, guys, um, if you do put your hand up and you someone comes to you with a mic for a question, if you could please stand up, please. Uh, this is a live broadcast online very shortly, so uh, if you could stand up just if, if you're about to ask a question, just for the camera guys, that would be great. Okay, coming up we have one more person. Um, this lady attracts millions of people to her videos every single month. She is absolutely fantastic, you're going to love her. Please welcome to the stage, Sorel. Thank you. Thank you. First up, today's a really big milestone for me. Let me tell you why. So today is my first ever official YouTube speech. This is a really big deal for me. So much so, actually. I really want to take it in. It's like, it's really important for me. Exactly. <laughs> Personally, I really find it very interesting when uh, I see other people operating and how they vlog. For example, being around like these guys the last couple of days, just seeing how they do everything, I learn the most from those experiences. So I do actually want to vlog a little bit, and maybe it's also a good insight for you to see how a professional with 500,000 subscribers does it. Um, it's ridiculous, and even Peter was making fun of me the other day because of the way I hold my camera. But everyone's got their own little things that they do. So do you guys want to be in my vlog? Yeah. Excellent. All right, let's begin the talk. Um, I do want to say something. So, how many people actually do know who I am? Oh, wow. <laughs> Thanks. Anyone lying about that? Ex hey. <laughs> uh, okay, so yeah, I um, actually, my YouTube journey is a li little bit interesting. I'll go into it a little bit more in a second, but um, about April time, um, that's when I started kicking off. So if, so if you didn't know me about just before April, that's completely fine because in April I had 120,000 subscribers and then in the last couple of months I've like really grown massively. So all of this is so new to me, it's very confusing um, and I am like beyond grateful for the opportunities that come with YouTube and being an online creator because I'm standing here now and I've been hanging out with like amazing humans for the last four days and this is all because I was just persistent as crap. I'm trying not to swear, I'm Australian, it's really hard not to swear. <laughs> I'm so persistent that I just created these videos for like 18, 19 months with, with hardly any results because I wanted this so bad and no one was gonna tell me no. I was so excited to make it happen and I didn't even know why I wanted to create these videos. I just did it because it felt so good to have the power to press like upload. It was so fun. And now I'm like, Peter just went on stage before. Maddie went on stage before that, and Jesse, who's my, like, my best friend. Like, this is amazing. I'm so grateful, like, hanging out with all these creators. Like, I don't even know what I'm doing here. I literally look at my life, I'm like, what has happened? So if you think that, you know, maybe it's not going to happen for you or whatever, you just, I'm, like, skipping to the end of my, my talk here. <laughs> you have to be your biggest fan. Also your biggest critic, because that's what helps you get really good at everything and never sleep uh, enough, because you're always wanting to create and get better. But you also have to be the person that believes in yourself so much that you're going to be like, I'm going to do this. I don't care what anyone says. I had people literally laughing in my face when I started YouTube. My first false start was like six years ago, seven years ago. Um, and someone literally came to me because YouTube wasn't a thing then. And I started with comedy. <laughs> I'm not funny. Um, yes. Thank you. I'm not funny. Uh, and someone, I made a video, like a comedy video, and people came up to me, like this guy, and he was like, why'd you do that for? And I was like, whoa, not gonna do YouTube anymore. 
And that, so that stalled me for five years. I was like, okay, I'm not going to do that. And so many false starts, but I'm so glad that I kept on going back and going back and going back. And amazing things have happened because I was so persistent in my goal with this weird platform called YouTube. And I, I, I didn't know what I was going to do when I started, just as an FYI. If there's anyone that doesn't know yet what they don't want to know, uh, <laughs> what they want to do, um, I only started figuring it out about 19 months into my journey. So, long time. Anyway. So at the beginning of the speech, um, I was meant to play some slideshows. I'm very sorry, guys. <laughs> they made a slideshow and a video for me, and I don't even know what it is. So then I press a button. Voila. And then I press another button. Voila. That was a very silent one. <laughs> Epidemic sound, they should be like, music, boo, boo, boo. <laughs> anyway, welcome to my masterclass. Okay, so today we're talking about building an unstoppable empire, conquering any industry with a lens. I made a slideshow today because Dan Mace told me that it's a good idea. Um, and I followed in his, like, today I was like, da, 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 da. <laughs> So this is what also happens when you're hanging out with creators, they give you good ideas. Um, and since it's my first talk, it's going to trigger my memory and hopefully do a better job. But anyway, so yeah, I want to talk about building an unstoppable empire um, with video because the potential using video for yourself to have like the life of your dreams, just using this beautiful, amazing platform. Um, I love video. It is, I, I'm so blessed right now to be standing here talking about my obsession with video because, is, because it is 1,000% the most powerful tool we have today in marketing, in having the microphone, like the worldwide microphone, the power in video is insane. And I know all of you guys here agree with that because you're here for a reason. So very, very good crowd. My journey of being a YouTuber. So I used to be actually a marketing manager um, for events company. During the same time, I started an online business and it became the biggest online business in its um, niche. It was actually pin-up vintage uh, information, which is strange because I was the biggest tomboy in my entire life. And my mom just told me to like create a website because she was into websi website creations. And I was like, okay, let's research a niche and figure out like what's good, what people want, and if there's any space that I'll fill it. And then I came across pin-up and I didn't even know what pin-up was. But anyway, I grew it into the largest um, online information source for that, which was really cool. Then I became a photographer and videographer because I got bored of doing beauty stuff because I'm not into that at all. And I didn't want to actually follow the stereotypical path of what most female creators um, are being told to do or what we think we should do. I just wanted to be a creator, full stop. I didn't want to be like a beauty or female or anything. I just wanted to be a creator. So I followed the, my heart on that. So I left that, became a photographer and videographer. And then after that, I became a YouTuber. I became a photographer... Um, I picked up my camera officially three and a half years ago. And I'm here now. What's up? It's the best. Um, <laughs> no? I'll just sit down. <laughs> um, no, the reason I mention all these things is because I think a lot of us, um, we think that like getting onto YouTube is like a like, maybe simpler thing, but I don't think anybody that has, like, has presented today um, in the master classes um, none of them have just started off with zero background. Like, Maddie's a professional, he does like commercial, he used to do commercial, really high end stuff. Peter's been doing videos for seven years. Cody, what's your story? Okay. But, yeah. but you ha oh no, wait, you have video as well. So, every single one of us has had like a, an experience with video, working for someone else, honing our skills, getting better and better, learning everything we need to learn in order to get the best videos out there of ourselves. If it's not of yourself, I, I don't know if there's, how many business owners here that are trying to get better in business? Okay, and influencers? Like more influencer side? Oh, I don't know, I can't see this. Okay, let's say, business. Okay, all right, cool. Influencers, excellent. All right, so there's like an interesting mix. Um, Whenever I say like building yourself up, I might just be referring to building up your business. Um, so you just need to have all the background components of it. It's not an overnight process. It takes a long time. Everything takes a really long time to get uh, to where you want to be. Uh, it's not overnight. So you have to have patience. That's one thing. 
Um, and I wanted to mention my journey because sometimes it looks from the outside that it's super easy, super fast. It's a lot of grinding work, a lot of work. Epidemic sounds. I'm back onto the screen uh, because I do want to mention um, the epidemic sound guys. They wanted me to come out and talk. Um, forever grateful because they did completely change my mind, uh, my mind, <laughs> my life uh, with these last few days. And they wanted me to touch on music. And I think all of us really understand that without music, there is no video. Like you can't have a video without music. It, that's like a, such a big component of it. And Epidemic Sound has made like a beautiful um, platform for us to access music very, very fast and very easily. And it really has changed everything about like just getting your videos up faster and quicker because you can browse so quickly the music and get everything you need. So thank you guys for changing like the face of music as well on YouTube and making it so accessible. Cool. Is it too late to dominate? Oh, I didn't realize that rhymes. Is it too late to dominate? Does that rhyme? Oh, sick. Um, is it too late to dominate? Uh, no, absolutely 100% not. Um, lots of people think that maybe YouTube is a bit too saturated, right? Like, oh, it's too many videos, it's going downhill. I'm like such a big, um, what's the word? <laughs> I'm a, such a big, oh, I can't think of it. Like I, I love vouch for, I advocate, thank you, advocate for um, people starting on YouTube and I, I just really believe that we're in the beginning stages. I heard a statistic and I'm not even sure if it's true, but I roll with it because it really helps me. Uh, apparently two to three billion new people are gonna come onto YouTube in the next few years. That's a lot of people. That means that we're just at the beginning stages. That means that the platform is open for all of us. I mean, I came onto this like two years ago onto YouTube. Really, I was starting to make um, like proper content, I'd say from April, and I'm already at 500,000 subscribers. I'm not saying like I've grown to be like the biggest in the world, but I'm like, this is full time. I get to be a full time creator, which is the ultimate dream. I do whatever I want. I create videos however I want. And that's not a long time. And I found my niche. The reason I succeeded, I guess, so quickly is because I found a niche. And I think that's super important for us to do. So whatever you think that, that, that like, is it too saturated in whatever you might be thinking? Even if you're in photography, like a lot of us here are doing photography. Most of us do photography. Whoa, have I been talking really like quiet? Oh, sick, okay. Um, most of us do photography, right? Uh, but all of us have found a different slight niche in all that. Like me, pretty lucky, I'm, I'm pretty blessed. There's not a lot of female f uh, filmmakers out there. And I've chosen that route because I love it. Um, but there's so much space in this and I'm hoping more girls will go into this section. Not that, I, okay, I just need to say something. I'm not a female creator, I'm a creator. But it's really cool that I'm a girl because it also did help me. So it's like a cash 22. Um, so, um, yeah. There's just, like, you have to find your niche, and then you can succeed with a few little elements, which I'll go through in a second. Build up your brand, build up your business. Okay, so um, I don't see myself as just, like, Sorella Moore. I see myself, like, that is my brand. Everything that you see online about me is a brand. Sorella Moore, like, my photography, I do my advanced selfies, I don't know if anyone's seen my Instagram. It's pretty poppin'. Not gonna lie, follow me. I went, <laughs> so I went to see Fat Man Scoop on the weekend. Oh no, like a few days ago. Does anyone know Fat Man Scoop? Okay, so I, I was so excited, like teenage dream to see this performer. He's, I think he's like 50 or 60 now. So like, I, I don't know, he's trying to stay relevant, I think a little bit and he's doing it wrong. Not that age is wrong, whatever, but he's just doing it wrong. And he, the whole time he was like, follow me on Instagram, Fat Man Scoop. Three seconds later, follow me on Instagram, Fat Man Scoop. So maybe I'll do that today. No, I won't. Um, but yeah, everything I do online is a brand. Um, I put a very specific message out there, just kind of like what Peter was touching on. Um, we don't feel the need to share everything that we do. We share the things that are going to help someone, someone, inspire them, uplift them, make them a better person, 
make the world a better place, um, give them information that's going to change their life. Uh, so everything I do is a brand, and I want you guys to think of yourselves as a brand if you're an individual creator, or um, if your business, obviously, that's a brand in itself. But it's very important for you guys to be professional. Like, do not post, like, snaps of yourself drinking and vomiting everywhere. Like, you really do have to kind of censor yourself a little bit because you are a professional brand. And I think a lot of creators go wrong in that, that they just overshare. I did that for a while as well. I didn't know the balance and I overshared a little bit. Um, and you just have to like bring it back. You are a brand. Think about what like other brands, if they wanted to work with you, would they work with you if they saw certain things that you were doing? Like swearing, for example, at the beginning, I, I, d I swore in some of my videos and then someone was like, you might lose brand deals over that. Like, would you want to do that? I was like, oh, good point. Like bleep it out, super easy. Don't say the F word, like super easy your brand. <laughs> so think of yourselves as a brand and that is a very sure way to build up your business um, by looking at yourself as a professional. And these are the elements I was talking about in terms of being able to build up yourself in today's industry still on YouTube and make yourself super successful. So uh, luckily a few people have already touched on some of this stuff. So gut, authenticity, which um, yes, that's the what Peter just spoke about, and I was a little bit angry because I was like, that's my point. <laughs> uh, we got authenticity, which is obviously very important. Like, you don't have to be crazy and chase lemons at all if you don't want to, but you can. Uh, I am very full on, and most of my life I was told I was too full on. Uh, people said, like, turn, turn it back, like, you're annoying, blah, blah, blah. Um, my ex-boyfriend said that, there was, that I was too much. <laughs> yes, I am too much, but it's great. I love it now. I love it because YouTube helped me to like realize that you can be whoever you want and you don't have to hide um, yourself. Um, you can be 100% yourself and people will either love it or they hate it. Like not everyone wants to subscribe to me. Some people don't and that's fine, you know. They'll find someone else, but the people that love me and they resonate, they're gonna stick around. So authenticity is so, 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 so important. Quality. I think this is where you are gonna differentiate yourself a, a lot. Oh, backtrack, authenticity. I still wanna touch on this. I see this a lot, that people for some reason, like they see that someone's doing something really well and it's going really successfully and then they copy it. Like we see videos that look the same all the time. Like, uh, what else? Just like everything is the same. Instagram is the same, same photographs. Everything is the same. When everything, everyone is doing one thing, I almost consciously do the polar opposite thing. Like I'm running away from that thing because I don't wanna be like everyone else because that is a harder track to be recognized. Why would you make it difficult for yourself? Do the opposite thing and it's gonna work for you in so many ways. Like if lots of people are doing B-roll, do the opposite. If lots of people are doing like, happy, smiley photos on Instagram. Maybe try the opposite, see if it works. Um, if everyone's really bright on their video editing, do the opposite, maybe it'll work. And you'll find out what you are actually interested in because I think sometimes we see the trends and we go for the trends, but we don't actually like it. Like for so long, I actually tried to do a lot of the trends and I was like, I don't like that. So why am I doing it? Because everyone else was doing it. So make sure you stick to your own guns and figure out what you love for yourself. Don't make it hard for yourself. Go the opposite way. Uh, which brings me to, to quality, what I touched on before. Um, quality is super important as well. Just gonna skim over, over this one. There's a lot of videos out there on YouTube that are still not very high quality. Um, just realize I'm not breathing very much. Okay. So there's not many videos that are super high quality out there still um, in so many different niches uh, that you can dominate. You can like literally look at a niche and say, I wish I could be in that. Like check out the competition, be like, oh, you know, I, I think I could do better than that. And you just do a little bit more quality, add your personality to it, and it could be really, really grand. So there's a lot of opportunity just if you always, always, always stick to quality, never compromise quality. But you have to be consistent. Um, so, I'd say my growth happened, yeah, as I said, April. 
um, I had 120K subscribers at the time, and I was just like, oh, oh. So I had a sponsorship, actually, that started coming in at that time. It was one of my first sponsorships, and I was like, yay, what the hell am I going to talk about? Because I didn't have any structure to my work just then yet. But when a sponsor comes to you, you kind of have to step up your game a little bit <laughs> because you, you don't want to just like throw out anything. You kind of want it to work. So they come back and they want to work with you again and you establish a relationship. Then they book you like for 12 months and you get 12 months worth of income, a regular income coming in every month, which is a definitely a thing that happens if you do great work. They want to work with you longer. So in yeah, April, I, I was having a brand deal and I was like, I have to do something. <laughs> so I started making how-to content. Um, this was a really big changer for me. This is what actually made me escalate. And I'm not saying that everyone has to do how-tos, absolutely not. Um, but you have to give value in all your videos. Value is like crazy important. But the value, the quality, it has to be consistent as well. So I started doing two videos a week in April. That's when it all started. And that's when the growth started happening. If you don't have consistency, you're not gonna grow like 100%. And every single creator talks about this. Everyone, like Casey says this all the time. Like he's, he's like, you know, vouching for the constant daily uploads for a long time. Like just keep pushing, keep grinding with the content. Because you know, if you're not in people's faces, they're not gonna wanna like, they're not gonna remember you, they're not gonna subscribe. It's like a movie show, like, uh, because I upload on Wednesdays and Sundays. People literally expect this all the time from me. They know it's coming, it's a TV show, they click on on a Wednesday or a Sunday, and it's there. So it's consistent, people expect it, they subscribe, I'm their best friend, they are waiting for me, and I deliver. And they know they can count on me, which is really great. So if you don't have consistency, you are not gonna succeed in any industry, whether it's for your business, or it's for yourself as a creator. Um, with all of these different range of elements, all of these, you start nurturing a beautiful community of people that love everything that you do um, and you nurture them through different ways as well and they're the ones that become your super fans and spread your work uh, and your business goes up and up and up and up, which is really, really great. Niche, I touched on that. Five buckets of content. Has anyone heard this theory? I wanted to give you guys something a little bit practical before I go. How much time do I have? I'm having a lot of fun. Thank you for being so great. Quiet, I'm not gonna lie. Very freaking quiet. <laughs> but it's okay. Thank you. Okay, amazing. Yeah, I got the biggest slot of time. Isn't that cool? <laughs> it's amazing, we'll have uh, good questions. Um, five buckets of content. Yeah, I wanted to give you guys something practical. Um, how many people here uh, for the influence, actually no, businesses as well. How many people are a little bit confused as to what they should be sharing online? About three. Can you actually do the up? Yes, thank you. Brilliant, okay, cool. So this is, this is for you guys. Um, because when I started, I didn't know what I was gonna talk about, as I mentioned, and I, I get this question a lot on YouTube. So I cover influencer stuff on YouTube, I uh, cover uh, photography, lots of photography stuff. Uh, posing, I do posing a lot. Um, filmmaking a little bit now, because I'm getting into more filmmaking. Um, and travel and human optimization. Like, that's a big range of things, but I didn't come to this by mistake. I actually follow this strategy. This strategy isn't just like me coming up with it randomly. I uh, was told this by a guy that started the first and largest social media agency in the entire world. It was the most, pa like the biggest. He was dealing with influencers with millions and millions and millions of followers. And when I heard this in my early days of YouTube, I was like, l I listened <laughs> and I did and I followed and it worked. So if you're confused as to what to do, whether it's what to share for your business as well, if you have lots of ideas and you just don't know how to like rein them back in, um, this is what you want to use. So how this works is that you have different areas that you might be interested in yourself. Um, for me, it was travel, uh, photography, human optimization. That was 
it. And oh yeah, I started with comedy as well. So I had these different elements that I didn't know which one to concentrate on because I didn't know any of them that well yet, but I had these interests in those areas. Um, so what I did is I started trialing um, the five different areas. So I made videos about travel. I made videos about photography, about posing, about um, comedy. <laughs> okay. And then as soon as I started doing comedy, I realized that no one really cares about that, <laughs> which is great. So I dropped that very, very quickly. And then I, started, I kept observing the rest of the pool I was, as I was making my videos. Whatever was also interesting me, I was feeling myself like, that did not come out right. I was, um, <laughs> I was feeling how I was, I was, uh, how I was feeling within myself when I was making this content. Uh, was I enjoying it as well at the same time? So I spent like six months, or three to six months on like these four or five buckets of content and watching, observing, did I like making it? Did I not like making it? Culling uh, a certain ones that weren't working. That's a very important thing. So you wanna be observing what is working, what your audience loves, what they want more of, um, what they're not clicking on, what they're not liking, and you just like drop the ones that aren't working. Then you continue. You keep like bubbling away at these little content pieces. And eventually there's one that kind of comes up, or two or three, that people are like, no, I, I really like this. I appreciate this. I want more of this. And they keep asking you questions about it. Um, so right now I'm personally known as <laughs> the advanced selfie queen. <laughs> um, it happened as a bit of a joke. I just started taking my own photos, travel photos, because I travel by myself a lot. Um, I actually, I don't have a house. I live full time out of a bag. Um, and so I travel by myself a lot. Uh, and I, no one was taking great photos of me and that really bummed me out because all these beautiful locations and no memories. And if you guys know your creators, if you're in a location and you don't have memories of that, that sucks. <laughs> like if you, don't, if you don't create or capture something, for me, it's really important to have myself in, in those experiences just because it transports me back into those moments. It was really important for me. So I st started taking my own photographs um, and I just like stupidly called them advanced selfies because it was hilarious because I, I, I think selfies themselves are like not the best and not the coolest and a little bit vain and maybe too self-obsessed in a, a way, but then I do advanced selfies now, so I'm just, uh, just as bad. Um, so I called it as a bit of a joke, but then I just observed like what people wanted. I was traveling a lot, creating uh, travel content a lot, but people kept on asking like, but how do you take these photos? Like, is that you on your Instagram? Like, you, did, you, did you actually do all of that yourself? Like, where's your remote? How are you hiding it? Um, how on earth do they look like so professional? So I started making videos about that, making more and more and more posing stuff because people were like, I don't know how to look good on photos. Um, so I became like, yeah, the advanced selfie queen and now I have a <laughs> advanced selfie university. <laughs> I called it a university as a joke as well. It's great. I love it. Um, and it's going really well. Really, really well. Like awesome passive income while I'm sleeping. Really, really cool. Um, so you just don't know ever really where your channel might go. You might have some ideas of where it's going to go. And you also have to stick to your guns. And, you know, like I get sometimes asked, um, like, how do I do my makeup? Like, it takes me about three minutes to do my makeup. And they want me to do videos on it. I'm like, no. That's not happening. <laughs> I'm not interested in doing videos on that. So you stick to your guns, but you're also following what the audience wants and giving them what they want because that's gonna help you grow. But just don't shortcut yourself ever, 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 ever on that. Is there any questions about the five buckets of content? Yes. I got it. Thank you very much. Um, with your five buckets of content, and you have a different kind of things you want to do, what do you kind of do if you kind of got comedy and tutorials in one? How do you figure out whether you should just maybe do tutorials or maybe just do the comedy, split them, or do you keep them together, or do you mush something else in there as well? Maybe. I don't know. Uh, good question. You j it's the same thing. You just observe. Like people, are, they, are people responding to you well? Do they actually like your comedy or are they not watching it as much as your tutorials? 
Um, you just observe what, what the audience wants. Um, and uh, like back to going back, 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 talking about authenticity, if you are a comedian naturally, like you just incorporate that into your videos. Um, m the information I share, some of it is a little bit unique, but some of it you can easily find just by Googling it and finding like a document that's really boring and bland and bleh, like lame. But I bring life to my videos. I bring my personality to my videos. I don't just say like, this is how you take photographs. Step one, blah, blah, blah. Like, <laughs> that's boring, you know? But I, I add entertainment factor into my videos because I want people to watch it. I want people to learn. I think education is one of the most important things that we will ever have as humans. Um, creators as well, if you want to get great at anything. Like, you just have to keep hanging on to education. So I, I teach a lot. Um, but so, so that's why I entertain a little bit as well and make it upbeat and beautiful because I want to I want to keep you there because I want you to learn as much as possible through watching my stuff. So yes, YouTube is like a fast consumption platform still and you want to add elements of entertainment or at least your personality somehow. Don't, don't make it bland. Just, I mean, at the beginning you guys are going to be so nervous. Like, I was so nervous. <laughs> I had to like redo sometimes videos three or four times or f yeah, or scrap ideas like videos that I've created all together because they just sucked so bad. And most of my videos still suck so bad. <laughs> no, um, I actually don't like a lot of my videos ever. Once I create them, I'm like, ah! But I think the difference is that I still do it and I upload it. Um, I don't let that voice inside of my head get the better of me. I kind of just do it because, uh, ooh. Great segue. Be your biggest fan. <laughs> so I touched on this on the beginning, and I mentioned I like skipped forward way too far. Um, yeah, you really have to be your biggest fan in this. And I also said that you have to be your biggest critic. Um, who's their biggest critic in this room? Yeah, there's, I would say most people, <laughs> like, we're tough. We're really rough on ourselves. Like, the things that we say to ourselves, Nasty, 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 nasty. Like you would never, ever, ever say that to anyone else <laughs> because you would get so beaten up, you'd have no friends. Um, but we say it to ourselves, which is like the craziest part of it all. Um, so we are our biggest critic. And I used to be really annoyed at myself for doing it. Like, oh, that video sucks. Oh, you're not funny. Like you don't deserve to be here. Oh my gosh, the dilemma when I was coming to this conference, I was like, oh my gosh, uh, did they choose the right person? Like, am I actually meant to be here? I don't deserve it. I have 500,000 subscribers by accident. Like, <laughs> I just, I don't know. But so I had, I battle with this all the time, but it, but it helps me to get better. And I use that now as a tool to help me get better. Um, I think I even heard Terry Crews talk about it. Like, he embraces his inner critic because that's what makes him the best every day, a better version of himself, which is what you want to do. You never want to be like, better than Joe Blow over here. You want to be better than yourself that you were yesterday, right? So the inner critic is so important as well. And I love my inner critic and hate at the same time. But I, I appreciate her because she really does push me to do better. But at the same time, as I said at the beginning, you have to be your biggest fan. And when things are really tough and they're really rough and nothing's working, and you've been working on your YouTube channel for years, like 18 months and nothing's going right and no one's like, it's not growing, but there's something inside of you that says, no, this is really, really, really what I want. Like you just have to follow that because you don't know who you're gonna meet in 192 days, 192 days to Peter McKinnon as Cody did. Like he did the vlogs, he didn't know what was gonna happen. He was just creating videos and then Voila, he gets a message from Peter, like, that's crazy. You don't know who you're going to meet. Um, you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, so you just have to, like, believe in yourself. That is the biggest thing. Like, make yourself the best version of yourself, but also, um, like, with the critic, but also believe in yourself. Oh, I have this slide, and this slide wasn't meant to be in here. I, I thought I took it out. But how? That was a different talk. <sighs> <laughs> And questions. Yeah. Hi. Hello. Oh. Uh, 
question about the buckets. Um, I sort of have a sort of question myself, where should I go? Uh, I, English is my second language. Uh, I'm Polish, so I can also, dzień dobry. So I'm thinking, should I go into Polish direction and speak my native language? I live here uh, for a long time and we collaborate in English, we, we create in, in English, uh, but it's a little bit, I, I assume it will be a little bit easier to do it in Polish and um, it would be more natural. So you feel like you're more authentic in but, uh, the Polish language? It's the, it's the choice of, you know, and ju just starting and choosing the bucket I'm, I'm going to bet on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's your advice? Uh, okay, so my advice on that is to look into how Polish YouTube is working. So um, I had a girl the other day that was I was mentoring, um, and she's Spanish, and she was like trying to do videos in uh, English. And I was like, girl, do you know how big the market is for Spanish right now? Like, huge, enormous. And, I, and she wanted to get rid of that massive advantage that she had for herself. Um, same for you. Like, maybe the Polish YouTube is pretty crappy. Like, have you looked into it? You have? And what is it like? Is there... Com ex excellent! I love that! Then do that. No, I, I, got, I legitimately got goosebumps because that... You already know that's where you belong, so why are you fighting that? That, like, there's obviously... How many subscribers do you guys have? Okay. I spend a lot of time with young people. Um, I connect easily with people. And it feels like, and I'm also by nature, by education, I'm a teacher. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I could share my life experience uh, and that would be probably quite valuable. That's, that's how I learn. I learn from people who are more um, experienced than, than I am. Mm -hmm. And I listen to them. And I think I could do, do the same um, to help others. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of us actually have the desire to help others. Does anyone else have like that weird desire? Okay, it do, you don't have to. I'm not saying that you have to by any means. You're not a bad person if you don't want to help. Like some of us just have this bug. Um, so yeah, you follow that as well because I followed that because I love helping people. Um, secondly, like you might as well try as well. So I, I, there's, a, there's a channel, um, I don't even know what the exact channel is, but they do a couple of videos in Spanish and then they do some in English and they have subtitles on both. Um, and there's like that works really well for them. So maybe that could work for you do them in Polish and then have subtitles. Um, it could work really, really well. Uh, but I, my, I'm, I only just started opening up that I'm Polish as well. Like my background's Polish. And like I'm getting a really nice, amazing base from Poland now coming over and then sending me messages in Polish, being like, hey, like in Polish. Um, <laughs> and, and they love it. And, that's a m and they become kind of super fans because they're in on this connection. Like we have this strong bond because we're both Polish. Um, so it's like a really, really great, area that I've now just realized that I can tap into, right? Um, so just try, it's literally trial and error. The beginning stages is just trial and error. So yeah, give it a go, see what happens. Subtitles always though. I have subtitles on my videos as well, like super important, FYI. Questions? Hey. Um, I just wanted to ask, uh, you were saying that authenticity is a very important but you also said that you have to be careful about what you post for brands, not to like use bad language. Where do you find the line where you almost find like you're yourself censoring yourself or changing yourself? I just want to know. Oh, I oh, I battled with this so hardcore at the beginning because I I I hate rules. I hate rules. And if someone tells me I can't do something, I want to do the opposite <laughs> like so badly. So when. I started, I purposefully started swearing a little bit in my videos, but then I realized that I'm in the world where I have to abide by certain rules. I have to follow some of the rules. If I want to succeed, if I want to get paid, if I want to make this a full-time thing, like, okay, do I swear and lose the ability to get paid, <laughs> or do I just drop that tiny little thing, like release a little bit and be like, okay, fine, you guys win on this tiny instance, 
and just sacrifice that so in order for me to make a full-time living out of this? The o answer was pretty obvious. Like, I knew that that's, that was fine. In terms of oversharing, like, other things, like going out with your friends, drinking, whatever, honestly, I don't think people care too much um, about that. It depends on the kind of channel that you create for yourself. Like, if it's about party lifestyle, like, there's certain um, creators that do that kind of thing. To me, that's... I don't, I don't find that interesting. I don't even know that world at all. My stuff is like, I want to learn from YouTube. So that's kind of what I follow. And it's very professional. I keep it professional as much as possible. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't actually necessarily think that people care too much if you're going out and like drinking, partying. Um, you can always just, just like whatever you would put in front of your mum, that's probably a good level of what you want to show to the world to be honest. Oh, your grandma. Let's go for grandma. I think that's a better bet. Unless you're super close to your grandma and your grandma swears and smokes like crazy. Maybe that's good too. I don't know. But test it. It's all about testing, honestly. Like this YouTube, everything that we've done is also marketing. Like you have to split test and figure out what works, what doesn't, stumble a lot. Just like we, none of us really know the answers. We're kind of just like, ah, I hope it works. Test. That didn't work. Next. So test. So I have a question. So I on YouTube have two channels. So I just main channel that's kind of more, I'd say, kind of set up like I'd have a plan maybe a week before. But then I have another channel where I do just kind of more vlogs and like whatever. Like I don't really mind what goes on there. So then I don't know. Back like two years ago or like a year ago when I was watching YouTube, a lot of people did. But now, a lot of people are just like, like a lot of big YouTubers I watch now, they're kind of giving up their vlog channel and just like posting everything on the one channel. And last night when I was editing, I was like going to my mom, wait, this is not going, this is really annoying. Like I'm um, doing this thing with like my, one of my, like with some of my favorite creators. What happens if like this, people just retweet it or just so on and then my vlog channel suddenly gains more than my main channel like that would just be really annoying to me since it's my second channel like what would you what would you be advice to would yeah you like to awesome question put both two on or one? one or whatever yeah. yeah okay so vlog channel or main channel i had um a really great advice from one of the biggest youtubers i first met um she helped me with understanding youtube at the beginning because it's a bit of a monster um, we did a couple of collaborations and so forth, and I had the exact same question. Vlog channel, my channel, I had, the, I had two channels as well, for vlog and my main channel. And she said, if it's you, it goes on one channel. Like, that's basically it. Especially for vlogging, like all of these guys, they do one channel, right? Um, Dan Mace, he doesn't do vlogs, but that's his choice. But it's like vlogs, I am just starting to get into them. I did my first like proper vlog since I'm like a proper YouTuber on Sunday. Uh, I thought like I was documenting my uh, recent like milestone with the subscribers and I was like, I think this is kind of interesting. And I was coming here and I was like, I'm really nervous, I'm gonna vlog that as well. Um, and I made it a video and it was kind of my first vlog. Um, so you're, you have like your main videos that are super interesting and they gain new subscribers because they're searchable and people love, like for me, the how-tos. People love that, they wanna learn, it's great. And for anyone that is like a super fan, then they, fall in love with you further when they see your vlogs and your personality because they want to know more about you and the vlogs are that little insight into more of your life. So yeah, I keep it all on the same channel. If it's related to the same kind of thing, yeah, I keep it definitely on one yeah. channel. One more question. Yes. Okay, so I don't know if this is going to resonate with a lot of the room, but as a woman on YouTube, do you feel like a lot of pressure to be like, made up and that sort of thing because I find that Love this question. like men are very effortless you know and I probably should have put the question to you guys as well if you would also worry about your appearance in front of a lot of people because I find well as I said earlier I haven't actually started a channel myself yet but that's more about oh like I'm concerned about how I'm going to look mm -hmm when I do yeah. that. Do you uh, know what I mean? Yeah, I absolutely know what you mean. I love this question. Okay, I'm just going to also bring this back to make it more relevant. I think all of us feel the pressure to look our best. 
and I, I, like maybe you guys, a lot of guys don't do makeup. That's not their thing. Um, but we all feel the pressure, like wanted to wanting to look our best. And it goes back to like the professionalism. You want to look your your. Uh, you want to be professional and uh, and but still authentic, right? So you, I I wouldn't do an entire video. Uh, very often looking like like crappy clothing, stains on on my shirt. Uh, but I do makeup. Uh, I do videos without makeup or my hair crazy sometimes, uh, because I, I think like it's you can find a fine balance of like looking good, no, no, looking not scrubbed up but still professional. Um, and and it goes also in your posture, the way you're presenting yourself, the way you stand, um, the overall image. But every now and again, throwing in like a clip of me with like crazy morning hair to just bring it back and make people realize like I actually am human and my hair isn't perfect ever. <laughs> I just fake it a lot. Um, so yeah, elements of, this goes for everyone. Like you have to be looking pretty scrubbed up. Like you are a TV station essentially now. If you look at yourself as a brand, you are a TV station um, and it has to be pretty polished at all times. But bringing a little bit of like authenticity and yourself every now and again, like as a, like a pop of refreshing feels, just like Liza Koshy does, for example. Like we love her stuff and sometimes she's super polished on her videos and then all of a sudden, bam, she looks like a disaster. You're like, that's amazing. And it's really cool. So it just, it makes people fall in love with you more. So um, I think the pressure is there for both guys and girls. I wouldn't overthink it though. Um, you look amazing already. <laughs> so I, like you really don't have to overthink it. Um, it's, it can be scary because you're worried about people's judgment and, and stuff like that. Like, whatever. You're never going to see them. It hurts at the beginning when people are uh, chucking really mean comments at you. It really hurts at the start. Like, a lot. <laughs> like, I've cried at the start. I was like, ah, ha, ha. someone said my mouth is too big. And I was like, wait, I really like my mouth. Okay, cool, next. <laughs> like, I got on with it. So the beginning hurts, and then you just get over it. So... Last quick, I think that was the last one. I did it. <laughs> Thanks, guys.